Hi, Kat. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. good. In looking forward to you. I just sat down with a cider. <laughs> with a <the> cider? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good. Hard day at work, <laughs> I take it. Oh, well, I'm working on the band pretty much now, so I've just been having some meetings and, yeah, and running errands and all that kind of stuff, getting ready for this tour. How does it feel now to be working on the band and it's like doing... It's amazing. Yeah. It's definitely like the best, absolutely. Can I actually ask, have you got a recent album or something out? Only the Sex Chugs and then we released Good Things and then we did the Bogan Hunters and Fat Pizza stuff. Mm-hmm, yeah. But we weren't really able to move ahead on the new material because we couldn't get enough time with the band members that we had, but they gave everything they could and we were able to do some really good shows. But there's heaps of songs there waiting in the wings ready to move ahead on. So maybe next year, early next year possibly? Yeah, I hope so. Awesome. Because yeah, I think it's, been, I think it's probably been four years since I actually interviewed you. <laughs> wow, really? Yeah, I, it was in the oh, first year of the flies. show, I'm sure it was. Wow. Um, yeah, so, and you, at the time you did have a very revolving lineup in the band. It has since yeah. become more of a solid lineup, hasn't it? But it's been well, difficult. It has been difficult. And, um, you know, we were lucky enough to always find people to do what we needed to do at the time. But there's always, I think, the challenge is finding people who are career-oriented musicians as opposed to people that are happy to do it as a hobby. Yep. And that's a real challenge. Yeah, with all the hobby bands and that around too, it, it creates a lot of noise and it makes it a lot more difficult for bands like yourself to actually rise to the top. But you've been getting some massive supports and things in the last 12 months. Yeah, we were so lucky. We really were amazing. We, we was very fortunate to get those gigs and to know that the artists themselves had requested us too. So that was really cool just to know we've got some really nice peer you know support from these amazing musicians that that have heard of us overseas and when they come here they've asked for us so that's amazing yeah and well what we're talking about is you do have a tour that's about to start with southeast desert metal and they're a band that i believe that you're maybe paying it forward to because they're a alice springs metal band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well it just came about that their manager is a friend of a friend and he contacted me and said, hey, we're coming all this way to Melbourne and Sydney to do Brutality. Is there any chance you guys want to do a couple other shows? And, you know, being that I've been so hamstrung, I guess, in, and unable to tour for the last couple of years, I just went, oh, that sounds like a good idea. And in the space of an evening, contacting a few different venues that we're friends with, we'd had a whole tour booked and I turned around after the weekend and went, wow, okay. Well, that's going to take some work. <laughs> so we had all the dates really easily booked and they were stoked. So, yeah, it was a long way for them to come. So they, they, they'll get a lot out of it, hopefully, if people come. Yeah, which they will. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. actually, it is kicking off in Ballarat, isn't it, on the 4th of August? Yes, yes. And you have Sidonia playing on that one as well as our local band Infernal Bliss, which is another female band. Yeah. Female fronted. Yeah, yeah they came highly recommended by the venue. Right. And yeah, Sedonia, we love them. So we're going to be playing with them in Canberra as well. And we thought, why not add them onto this bill as well? Well, the way you're talking too, it sounds like you're still very much self-managed and like booking your own tours and DIY. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I just think that... No one's going to be as passionate about your own band as yourself. And we're lucky to have, you know, played a few of these different venues or areas in the past and have made some good relationships that we can pretty much give them a call any time and go back there. And we get a lot of support from the industry, I guess. People are happy with having the acts and, the, and we always have a beautiful crowd of people that come along and, and have a great night. So it's not rocket science. It's quite an easy thing to do once you've got a bit of respect there. Yeah, and you, you definitely stand out. I mean, I actually referred to you as the queen of metal in Australia to someone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I, oh, I think so you nice. have a hard time finding anyone to dispute that at the moment, actually. Well, there's a lot of talented people out there and that doesn't happen overnight like it happens you know through a lot of hard work and also through the music itself the music has to speak and people like their music then they can 
say whatever they want, really. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're making the music for ourselves because we can't live with ourselves if we don't. We want to be playing music all the time. That's our favourite thing to do. So we're really doing it selfishly more than anything. And it's great when everyone enjoys it and comes along for the ride. Yeah. You did say that South East Desert doing the Brutality Fest, which you're doing both of those in Melbourne and Sydney, contacting you to do a few extra shows spark yeah. this tour but you, then you have called the tour the brutality tour we call it the brutal tour i think the just out of sheer tour. laziness but it, it seemed to work <laughs> because it's a, it's coinciding with those two major shows so we may as well call it brutal because i'm sure it will be it'll be cold and we'll be out there just being brutal in australia i mean you can't get much more hard working than australian metal bands touring around and doing the hard yards driving going from ballarat up to newcastle yeah i was gonna say you're not even taking advantage and going up to the sunshine at all (laughs) yeah (laughs) that would be real that would be called the really brutal tour (laughs) it's gonna be fun for sure i can't wait can't wait to get back out there and do that because, you know, we haven't really been able to tour for the last couple of years, being that our members have been busy or hamstrung or just, you know, work commitments. But now the lineup that we have now with the new guitarist from Croatia and new bass player, Ben, now it's the kind of lineup where I can book the tour and then tell them later. I was going to ask about the guy from Croatia because, I mean, it's a pretty big commitment to put the time and effort into getting someone from overseas to come and play in your band like you did. Well, it was a big, big um, effort on his behalf, having to leave everything and everyone and his whole life and come over here to Australia where he only knows us, you know, through the internet and, you know, come and see what it's like in an Australian band, which can seem glamorous, I guess, you know, around the world. Mm. But in reality, it's very hard work. And I'm really excited to take him out on the road and and have him meet, you know, the real fans that are out there because there's such beautiful, supportive people that come to our shows and just just introduce him to them and have them appreciate, you know, the huge effort that he's put in. And that's why having a member like that who is just a crazy person that's unstoppable and, and would think that that's a perfectly reasonable thing to do, that's exactly the kind of people that we want in the band for sure because it's totally about doing things that are entirely unreasonable and, and wacky and, you know, most normal people would never consider something like that. I've written a number of new songs about being a normal person or being a freak because uh, there's definitely a recurring theme in, you know, why you do this, why you why you put the effort in that you do and, and why you don't kind of fit in or have a lot in, in common with many people that are considered normal in society because mm. it's a completely abnormal thing to do and that's why we like him so much. <laughs> <laughs> are you hoping then to get over to Europe soon? Mm. Oh, yeah, we'd love to get over there, definitely. I was chatting to some people today who might be able to help in some way, but really it's going to come down to us producing some new music and definitely making some new connections so that we can get over there because that would be that would definitely be our dream. Well, I'm really looking forward to the music you just described about feeling like you don't understand or yeah. with normal people and that. <laughs> totally. That's a song called Cannon to the Sun. We're going to be playing that. We're going to be debuting it live on this tour so that we can see what the audience thinks of it before we record it in the studio. I can't wait to do it. it was, I wrote it for Steve, my husband, the guitarist in Heaven the Axe, just to say, don't give up, you know, because it's, it's so hard and it's really heartbreaking. You know, there's all sorts of challenges involved in a band and having to retrain new members and, and get new members involved is is a really heartbreaking task and to have, have to keep doing it a number of times, you know, that was a song I wrote for my husband to just say, you know, we're both freaks together and this is what we love doing and don't be sad yeah it must be good to have your husband there with you but you are still the only girl in the band traveling around (laughs) yeah totally (laughs) how fun is that (laughs) well it is fun you know through the different members that we've had a lot of them really really close to and to the point where, you know, after gigs I'll be falling asleep on the lounge with one of them and Steve will just shrug and, you know, it's no drama because we're all so close and we're really, really just like, a, you know, a tribe together and it's all very respectful and, you know, everyone everyone really appreciates and respects each other's input and work and, and who they are as strange human beings. So it is fun and it's definitely where I, I definitely feel that it's where I belong. But what woman wouldn't be comfortable surrounded by a bunch of gorgeous, talented men? It is a lucky dream. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and not to mention the fact that they're metal men, so no one's going to screw with you, are they? <laughs> oh, exactly. If I ever go to a strange place, like a venue or something that's not a metal one, I'll always look for the metal head just to hang out and stand next to them. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a real family tribe about it, isn't there, when yeah. it comes to the metal scene and the people who love metal? I definitely get yes, that there's this... Cool. Um, not only this family feeling, but this whole respect and that, especially towards women in metal surrounding yeah. the top tier of metal bands. Yeah, yep, there's definitely, um, you know, it, and it, but it comes down to the individual too, you know. You can't just demand respect because you're a woman. You have to actually be somebody who commands respect and, you know, is a friend and a, and a mate and, you know, a good person. It doesn't matter really what if you're a girl or a boy playing music and rehearsing in band sheds and that's where I feel the most comfortable and I've been doing it since I was 13 years old. So it's where I belong and I'm really lucky to have my husband to share that with and that's been our dream together for 16 years. So we've been playing music since the year 2000 and it's what we, you know, it's it's who we are. Wow, I started on radio first in the year 2000. I do not remember coming across you back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, Evan, the axe didn't start till we left Wagga Wagga and oh. moved to Melbourne, yeah, in 2007, and then we just, yeah, moved down here, and, and then we started jamming with skits. He was the first person that we started jamming with on drums, and he's one of the most brutal heavy metal drummers in the whole country, and I remember saying to Steve, I'm not sure about this vibe, you know, because we were an acoustic duo. Maybe um, maybe we need to be more of a roots band, and Steve and Skits just looked at me and laughed because they're... um the most heaviest, you know, metal people that you can find. And here I am being unsure if I think it should be an acoustic song or not. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> and so you went from doing acoustics to screaming. Well, you yeah. You sing still, well, I know that, but you scream. Yeah, I, I'm a singer and I've learnt to, you know, sing in a more metal way and I really, really enjoy singing that way. But it all comes down to a song at the start, you know, is is actually writing a, a decent song to begin with and then it goes through, Steve's metal filter comes out the other side as what you hear is Heaven the Axe. But, you know, nine times out of ten they start on the acoustic guitar for sure. Right. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So then what made you actually start singing in a band at 13 or singing at 13? Uh, well, I started singing when I was six years old and I decided like at that age that I wanted to sing and that was going to be my life, you know. So I'm still here. I am still living out the dream of a six-year-old. But it's just been my the place where I belong. You know, I love music and I love playing. I, I love songwriting more than anything. Is my most happiest moment is for a song to actually come together that I've written. So that's definitely my first love is writing music and then recording it and having it all come together but then getting out there and performing it to people is just this whole other dimension of fun. Well then I'm going to ask you because everything is so great what is the one thing in having to do with you know the whole band experience that you would happily hand over to someone else? Hmm. Well I think definitely self-promotion I really don't like having to promote myself on Facebook and all that kind of stuff. I think um, like in the you know 90s or before that when you could only really learn about an artist through you know traditional media or through their music, it was a lot more alluring. But these days it's a necessary evil, so you have to actually promote yourself on social media because no one else is going to do that for you. So there's this whole dimension that's you know, added to the music, it becomes a multimedia industry rather than a music industry. So you have to be good at everything. That's really challenging, I think, because ultimately I'm a singer and a songwriter, but you have to also perform on social media. And I find that that can be really daunting and intimidating and anxiety producing, you know, <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to do that. And while I do it because I have to do it, I don't really like that at all. I, I find it really uncomfortable. Well, we'll all make sure we give you a post slot the love then to make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I really love everything about running the band. Like I, I find it really exciting and satisfying. And every day, like there's a you know, a tweet from somebody interesting or, you know, an email from someone and, and it's just, it's so thrilling and exciting. So every day there's something to keep you going. So I, I wouldn't hand over the management of the band too easily because I really enjoy that side of thing and, and just dealing with the music industry. Yeah, I, I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah. But really, 
being able to tour is um, so much fun and, and just being able to manage, you know, like late nights and, you know, probably a few too many drinks and then building your energy up again the next day and just going for it. It's just the most wonderful feeling because you, you can't just go out on tour like from regular life. You have to build the persona that goes on stage. It doesn't just appear. It comes from a whole lot of, you know, work and, and belief and um, confidence that you have to – it reflects in your whole life. So it's something that has to be built from this place of authenticity, well, especially for us because we're a very honest band. So it's um, – when we go out on stage, we're actually ourselves and, you know, sharing who we are and, and what we've got to offer. Yeah, awesome. I will actually mention the Brutality Fest now because you're not only playing in Melbourne, but is this the first Sydney one? Yeah, so the Sydney one's on the 13th, I think, Saturday the 13th of August at the Factory Theatre. Yeah, it's the first one and you are playing, but the Celibate Rifles are headlining. Yeah. Fireballs are headlining in Melbourne. Yeah, I can't wait to see them. I've always wanted to see them. Yeah, you do have Brutality Fest in Melbourne is on the 6th. So yeah. It's at the Tote and the Bendigo. Do you know which one you're actually playing at? We're at the Tote at 11 o'clock. Awesome. So people definitely should make sure they're at the Tote at 11 o'clock on the 6th of August. Yes. And then in Sydney, it's the 13th of August at the Factory Theatre. And the Brutal Tour starts on the 4th of August right here in Ballarat at Corova Lounge. Awesome, we can't wait. Yeah, well, Ballarat can't wait either. It is the 4th of August in the, Thursday. the Thursday in Ballarat and then Saturday yes. the 6th you're at Brutality in Melbourne. The 7th you're in Bendigo and then Thursday the 11th in Wollongong. Yes. Friday the 12th in Canberra and then Saturday the 13th in Sydney at the Brutality Fest. Yep. And then on the Sunday night you're doing a show in Newcastle at the Small Band Room. Yeah. I will tell people they can actually find out more about you and keep up with when you do release some new music and you're touring if they go to facebook.com forward slash heaventheaxe or yeah. heaventheaxe.com is your website. Yes, and that's where we've got um, an email list there so that we send out little love letters to our um, friends who subscribe on there and let them know when we're playing. And um, we also have a like a postcard list. So rather than, you know, when in the olden days fans would send letters to, to their favourite bands, now we, we actually write letters and send them out to our fans in whatever area. So if we're touring in New South Wales like we are now, we, we just sent out postcards to all our friends up there to make sure they know about the shows. Awesome. So we have that on our website too, so you can jump on that. Or if you buy any merch, you just automatically get put on it anyway. <laughs> it's not – you don't get a choice. <laughs> you mentioned that. You should tell people how to find you on Instagram. My name is Phoebe Pinnock, so you can just do that or go to Heaven the Axe, which is the band Instagram. I am following you both. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. It's always – fantastic to actually get to talk to you we've got to do it more often though you too thanks Kat well hopefully we'll have a new release soon yeah. that we'll be able to send you that's what we're working on at the moment I really am looking forward to it from everything I've heard from you tonight I'll tell people too if they do go to heaventheaxe.com right now and enter their email for your list they could win a $100 merch voucher that is true. We do that several times a year, randomly, just to um to give back to our fans. And it sounds like you give back a lot even in the shows you do. It sounds like it's all about the music and the fans. Yeah, we, we're always blown away at, at our shows. Like we can be going to a show and think, oh, God, I hope someone comes mm-hmm. and then end up spending all night just hugging people that have come that you've probably never heard of on social media or anything that you don't know who they are and they're all there and it just completely blows blows us away and we're really, really grateful. Well, I might not be able to make it to Brutality, but I'll definitely make it to Crova Lounge on the 4th. Brilliant. That's awesome. Yeah. I look forward to it. It's going to be that great. That will be wonderful. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Kat. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I want a sweaty hug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With great. dripping mascara as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Kat. Thank you. Have a good night. All right, mate. See ya. Bye. Bye.